Hi, thank you for joining me. My name is Jolene Morris, and in this video, I will discuss ketones and the four ways to measure them. First, let me clarify that I am not a medical professional. I am a mathematics educator. As such, nothing I share with you in my keto videos should be taken as medical advice. The purpose of my vlog is to share with you my keto journey and what works for me. I encourage you to comment below if you have helpful suggestions or positive responses for me. This is the table of contents for this video on ketones and the four ways to measure them. In case you don't want to watch this entire video, in case you are interested in only a section or two, I have a table of contents with links in the video description below. So what are ketones? They are an organic compound with a carbon double bond. They are created by the liver when glucose is limited. They are created by the liver during low carbohydrate consumption because ketones can't be made when carbohydrates are present. They're also created during high intensity interval training and during fasting. They are created from ingested fat, from weight loss, Ketones get into the cells without insulin. There are exogenous ketones and endogenous ketones. Exogenous ketones are ketone bodies, mainly BHB, that are consumed in supplement form to boost your blood ketone levels. Meanwhile, endogenous ketones are made by the body, such as in the case of a ketogenic diet. Exogenous ketones are a great tool for getting into ketosis faster and priming your body to use fat for energy. I used exogenous ketones when I first started my keto diet. I used a product from Dr. Boz called Ketones in a Can. So what are the benefits of ketones? Sustained energy, mental clarity, improved endurance and recovery, Weight management. I've lost 40 pounds so far on a keto diet, and I have about 10 pounds left to lose. They enhance metabolic health, longevity. I'm almost 80 years old. Maybe with sufficient ketones, I can live to be 100. Inflammation reduction. And insulin and glucose reduction. I have already reversed my type 2 diabetes. There are three types of ketone bodies. Acetone, acetoacetate, sometimes known as ACAC, and beta-hydroxybutyrate, usually known as BHB. Of these three ketone bodies, BHB is the one your body can use most effectively for energy. That's why most exogenous ketone supplements are made out of BHB salts. The process of turning stored body fat into ketones is called ketogenesis. And here's how your body makes ketones. When your body doesn't have sufficient glucose for fuel, such as during a low-carbohydrate diet, fasting, or exercise, your body breaks down fat into glycerol and fatty acids. From fatty acids, ACAC is produced. Then your liver breaks down the ACAC into BHB and acetone. BHB enters your bloodstream. Your organs take BHB and turn it into usable energy. Acetone is a waste or byproduct that is excreted via the urine. This slide discusses ketosis and ketoacidosis. Simply put, ketosis is good, but ketoacidosis is bad. Ketosis, usually known as nutritional ketosis, happens when your body creates ketones for energy as a result of following a low-carbohydrate keto diet. Then you experience health benefits of this metabolic state, such as the increased energy, better focus, and lower inflammation. The body tells us in the early phases of a low-carb diet that we are in ketosis by producing flu-like symptoms, keto breath, digestive changes, because the bowel bacteria are also adapting, and possible decreased exercise performance and insomnia. 
Fortunately, this ketal flu, or flu-like symptoms, only lasts a few days. Ketoacidosis is not the same thing as ketosis. Ketoacidosis, also referred to as diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, happens when the blood ketone levels of persons with diabetes rise to an unsafe level, usually above 3 millimoles per liter, and insulin levels decrease dramatically. This usually happens when diabetics stop monitoring their ketone levels, miss their insulin therapy consistently, and undergo stress, such as a trauma, surgery, or an illness. DKA is potentially lethal because it turns the blood too acidic, which affects organ function. It's important to note that if you're not diabetic, your risk of reaching DKA is extremely low. Either way, it's important to measure your ketones regularly to ensure that your ketones are within the normal range of 0.5 to 3.0 millimoles per liter. For more information about the difference between nutritional ketosis and ketoacidosis, watch this video by Dr. Ken Berry. It's important to test your ketone levels when following a keto diet to make sure that your body is producing and using ketones for energy. And it's especially important to track if you're diabetic. Measuring ketones allows you to fine-tune the keto diet for optimal carbs. It helps you avoid trigger foods, observe how exercise, sleep, and stress affect your ketone level. Well, when should you test? Individuals vary. Some people are highest in the morning, which is called a dawn effect, and have reduced levels of ketones after meals. Others tend to be low in the morning and rise during the day. Ketone levels often take a steep drop after high-intensity interval training, but they go up after aerobic exercise, such as walking and biking. Ketone levels will drop after a high-carb meal. Remember, the liver can't make ketones when carbohydrates are present. Ketones are measured in millimoles per liter, at least here in the United States. And these are the various levels. If you are at zero, obviously you are not in ketosis. 0.5 to 1.0 is light ketosis, and from 1 to 3 is optimal ketosis. Higher levels, like 3 to 5, are used for therapeutic ketosis, like for those that are epileptic or have Parkinson's disease. 8 to 10 is too high, and it's possible that you could develop diabetic ketoacidosis if your blood sugar or your blood glucose level is also high. Ketone testing can be easy and cheap, but it can also be expensive and invasive. There are four ways to test for ketones. Each way has a pros and cons, considering price, accuracy, and qualitative factors. We will discuss each of them on the next four slides. Urine testing. Testing your ketones in the urine is the cheapest and a highly convenient way to test your ketones, but it is the least accurate. You can buy ketone test strips at most pharmacies, and it's an easy method for someone who's just starting out on the keto diet. When you're testing your ketones in the urine, you are testing for acetoacetate. Urine testing is the cheapest of the four ways. The strips are only good for 30 days, so don't buy them in bulk. The strips are very sensitive to air and moisture and they're only good when you're first adopting keto. After you become fat-adapted, you have less ketones in the urine. So it's inaccurate when you are fat-adapted or if you're dehydrated. And testing the urine doesn't show your current level at that moment, only your level since you last urinated. The best practice if you're going to test with urine, test with different methods, Urinating directly on the strip versus peeing into a cup. Test at different times of the day to determine your pattern. After removing a strip, replace the cap to the container and don't expose the strips to moisture or strong light. There will be a desiccant pack inside the container. Don't remove that desiccant pack. 
it's necessary to keep the strips from being exposed to moisture. And check the expiration date. Ketone breath meters are a non-invasive way to test your ketones through the acetone level in your breath. They are not as accurate as blood tests are, as drinking alcohol, eating, and doing such things as brushing your teeth and the amount of water you drink can skew the results. They measure acetone, not ketones used by the body. There's a one-time cost for the machine. They require batteries or being plugged into an outlet. Mine requires batteries, and the only ongoing cost is to replace the batteries. They do require calibration about every 10 to 14 days. And again, they are affected by eating mints, chewing gum, brushing your teeth, and so forth. The numbers run high as compared to testing your blood. The numbers are usually 10 times what your blood measurement shows. It requires practice to breathe properly, and they are less accurate if carbs are present. The third method for testing ketones is the blood testing method. Using a blood meter is the most accurate way to test your ketones. However, it's invasive because it involves pricking your finger, and it can be expensive if you test frequently. However, if you value accuracy and can afford it, this method beats the rest. It measures BHB ketones. As I said, it requires a finger stick. The meters themselves are expensive, between $60 to $100. And then each time you test, it requires a test strip. Test strips are about a dollar a piece, so depending on how often you test each day, these can cost anywhere from $30 to $100 per month. But they are considered the most accurate, the gold standard of testing. There are some blood ketone monitors that measure both glucose and ketones. The fourth way of testing your ketone level is with a continuous ketone meter. This measures BHB, just as the blood test does. This is a relatively new technology. The Bio ks one Continuous Ketone Monitor just came out in September of 2023. Each sensor lasts 14 days. And this is expensive because the sensors are $80, so this method can cost $160 per month. Hopefully, the cost will come down a bit when the technology isn't so new and there's more competition. Speaking of technology being new, we will hopefully see one sensor that tests both glucose and ketones. There are no more finger sticks, and data is transmitted to an app via Bluetooth every five minutes. So, how should you test for ketones? That's really up to you. All four methods can provide useful feedback, so choose the method you will end up using. Here are some considerations. How accurate do you need? What price can you afford? Does your insurance cover any of the cost? How easy is it to use? Can you use it on the go? How painful is it? How sanitary do you need? And is the data friendly? Does it store your results over time? Personally, I started out with urine testing, but now I'm into the keto diet a year and a half, and I prefer the breath meter for my needs. It's a trade-off between price, accuracy, and qualitative factors. Thank you for joining me today for a discussion of testing for ketones. Next, you should watch this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel, and if appropriate, click the like button below this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.